I went to the bank to cash my Social Security check. I walked out of the bank, walking down the street, I put my hand for my money. I didn't have any. Someone must have followed me and got it. I was at home, and there was a knock on the door. I opened the door, and there was a man, and he said, I have come to check your water heater. So I let him in, and he knocked me cold and robbed me. These two men drew up alongside of me and scraped my fender. And I heard the scrape, and I stopped, and I got out as they got out to see what the damage was done. But instead of giving me some information, they pushed me to the ground and jumped in both cars and took off. Well, I was on my way home from work. I ran out of gas on a side street. And as I got out of my car, two guys approached me and they robbed me. Senior citizens are one of the favorite targets for crimes running the gamut of misdeeds from highly sophisticated bunco schemes to brutal physical attacks. As the elderly population increases, so does the number of crimes committed against them. Seniors are extremely visible and more vulnerable to crimes than younger people. They're physically weaker and not quite as alert as they used to be. Some have impaired hearing and eyesight. Many elderly persons live by themselves. Some of them are lonely and welcome the contact with nice strangers. Most of their lives were spent at a time when people were more trustworthy than today. More criminals were sent to prison then, rather than being allowed to roam freely. Many of them drug addicts, desperate to steal enough money for their next fix. Today, nobody is immune from crime. All of us are potential victims. But there are some very simple precautions which can provide greater security. We will show you how to protect yourself from harm's way, in your home, on the street, and if you're a driver, while using your car. Awareness is the key to safety. Your home is your castle. Yesterday's moat and drawbridge have become today's safety locks and window bars. This type of lock can easily be forced open from the outside. Have a deadbolt installed. It offers better protection. Almost any lock can be picked by a pro. But small-time burglars that prowl the neighborhood look for the path of easiest resistance. A weak lock is an invitation. Ask a locksmith or police officer for advice. Never open a door without knowing who is on the other side. You can see who is there through a door-eye viewer and talk through the closed door. It is better than a chain and a latch which can easily be broken. Scrutinize people who claim that they're from one of your utilities, from the electric, gas, or telephone company, or even from the police department. Service employees usually do not show up without prior notice. Ask for an ID. If the caller flashes it very quickly without giving you enough time to examine the badge, and if he seems to be excessively insistent, be suspicious. Contact his company for verification. It's a good idea to have a friend present at the time of service or to indicate that you expect the visitor at any minute. If the person is a phony, he may think twice before committing a crime. Windows have to be secured, especially if you live on the ground floor. The latch for the window should be in place. The windows can be locked in position with a steel pin so they cannot be forced open. Sliding doors can be secured in a similar manner. Window bars on the ground floor are often a necessity. They keep the bad guys out, but may keep the residents in during a fire. Too often, people get killed because they were entrapped by their own window bars. Fortunately, window bars are available that can be unlocked from the inside of the house and make it possible to get out in case of a fire. In some localities, the building code requires that approved release mechanisms must be installed. They have to be designed so that they can be opened from the inside 
without the use of a key or special knowledge or effort so one can escape quickly in case of an emergency. But even if you are not required by law to install such a security device, it is highly recommended that you do so. Women should list just the initial of their first name in the telephone directory, as well as on the mailbox. There are some bad people out there who want to target in on single females. Don't advertise your gender. Electrical timers switch lights on and off and may fool a burglar who's looking for an unoccupied house. Give the impression that someone is in your home while you're away. You don't need an unwanted reception committee upon your return. Burglars often try to find out if anybody is home by phoning. If you get several suspicious wrong number calls, or nobody at the other end calls, be on the alert. Warn visiting family members, especially children, not to reveal information to unknown callers, such as who's at home, who's out and how many adults are present or when an adult is expected to return. And, of course, you know to ask a neighbor to pick up your newspaper when you go away for one or more days. Don't advertise your absence. A thief who invades your home is looking for merchandise that can be sold easily and quickly. He just loves articles that are free of identification marks. Don't give him a chance. Inscribe your valuables with an electric engraving pen using your driver's license number or similar identification. The markings may deter the criminal from stealing the article. Stolen valuables with clear identification make it easier to locate the owner. Most appliances you own have factory imprinted serial numbers. Make a list and include it in the police report in case of a theft. Keep bonds, stock certificates, seldom worn jewelry, and other valuables, as well as important documents, in a safe deposit box, which is available in most banks. It's unfortunate that many seniors already feel that they are prisoners in their own homes, especially after dark. But by using some common sense precautions, you're able to reduce your chances of becoming the victim of a crime when you venture out of your home. I'm sure you don't do this anymore. But just to remind you, don't hide extra house keys under the doormat or in the mailbox. This is another place an experienced burglar is likely to look. Don't carry any valuables not needed on outings. And if possible, walk in pairs. Try to make arrangements with another senior who's in a similar position to go with you to the market or join you when you walk to the bank. Look for someone to accompany you on the way to your senior citizen center. It's more secure and probably more fun. There is safety in numbers. Observe your surroundings. Watch the people around you. One of the weapons of the attacker is the element of surprise. If the criminal sees your alert, he may look for another victim. At night, if possible, walk along well-lighted streets. Select routes that have ample pedestrian traffic. Avoid shortcuts through alleys. Stay clear of bushes where somebody could hide. If a friend or taxi takes you home, the driver should wait until you're safely inside the house. If you walk along a street that has no sidewalk, face the traffic. First of all, you're safer from being hit by a car. Second, you see who's approaching. That's why bicycle purse grabbers come from behind the unsuspecting victim. In case you're approached by a stranger, don't respond to his conversation stranger insists on talking to you, the intentions may not be honorable. Walk to the next house and request that someone call the police. 
you'll be surprised at the quick disappearing act put on by the stranger. Don't burden yourself with grocery bags, packages, along with your purse. It makes things awkward for you and looks inviting for a person with bad intentions. Women who wear purses with zippers should make sure that they're zipped shut. I bet you there's somebody somewhere just waiting to steal valuables from an open purse. Never leave your purse out of sight while you're in a store. Carry it on your arm, not in your shopping cart. It may disappear while you're looking away. Be just as careful while you walk through the parking lot. Purse snatchers may be on the lookout. For men, you can avoid a lot of grief by changing an old, old habit. I know it's tough. Keep your wallet in an inside jacket pocket. Or put it into your front pants pocket. Remember, old Fagan taught Oliver Twist to steal wallets. Well, Fagin's descendants and his eager apprentices are all around us, and in greater numbers than ever. The holidays are a favorite time of the year for many of us, but it's also the favorite time for purse snatchers, thieves, and burglars. Tis the season to be wary. Don't let a criminal spoil it for you. Precautions are also especially important when you're traveling. Airports are a fertile ground for pickpockets. People are preoccupied with their luggage, airline tickets, and boarding passes, and can easily be distracted. Be alert when someone asks you for a pen or information. His or her partner may use the distraction to steal some of your belongings. And don't forget, crooks don't always look like crooks. Prepare for the situation. Secure your money, your wallet, your purse. Know where your airline tickets are. Think it through before you get to the airport and have a problemless, enjoyable trip. A new wrinkle in the distraction crimes often played is the stain game. The tools are amazingly simple. Tool one is a small catsup package available at any fast food outlet. Tool two, a pushpin to pierce the package. Tool three, a tissue. The players, two persons with very bad intentions, looking for their victim. One member of the team passes by the victim and squirts a stream of catsup on the shirt of the unsuspecting person. Then the helpful stranger appears, points out the spot, and generously offers the tissue to remove it. While the victim is distracted, the partner in crime takes off with the briefcase and disappears into the crowd. Now, if worse comes to worse and you are robbed, what to do? Keep your cool if it's at all possible. Give the crook what he wants. At this moment, he has all the advantages on his side, the element of surprise. Chances are that he's much stronger than you, and he may have a weapon. Then there's the great possibility that the attacker is strung out on dope and acts irrational. Don't play hero. Possessions aren't worth risking injuries or your life. A few helpful hints for seniors who drive their car. First of all, have your vehicle serviced regularly to avoid breakdowns. Then another very simple precaution that can prevent a great deal of trouble, watch your gas gauge. Running out of gas on a highway can result in a serious accident. Running out of gas in a dangerous neighborhood may lead to experiences you could happily do without. Who needs that? Well, if you get stuck, do the following. Turn on the emergency flashers.
raise the hood. Then remain in the locked car until help arrives. If someone offers assistance, ask the person to phone for a tow truck or the police. Always have some change in the car for emergency phone calls to be made by yourself or a good Samaritan. When parking, especially at night, look for well-lighted and populated areas. Close all the windows tightly. Always lock the doors when you leave the car. And remember where you park. Large parking lots are among the favorite hunting grounds for the bad guys. Like the tiger in the jungle, they look with great patience for the weak. Don't let it be you. When you return to the car, have your key in hand. Check the back seat before entering to see whether you have an uninvited passenger. If the scene is clear, lock the car from the inside. Use utmost caution when you have to walk through some of the large public garages. If you're out by yourself, it's a good idea to carry a whistle. A small power horn could attract attention and scare off an attacker. Get into the habit of checking whether you're being followed by another car, especially when returning from a bank, a market, or any other place where you obtain cash. In case you suspect somebody is following, never enter your own garage or driveway. A criminal may have selected you as an easy hit. Drive on to a police station, fire station, or a highly populated business district. Don't hesitate to call the police and tell them your suspicion. There's another criminal act to be aware of. The bump and rob scheme. A car, usually occupied by two persons, may purposely hit you, causing a minor fender bender. The criminals want you to stop, exit the car to examine the damage. The plan is to rob you and sometimes steal your vehicle. More often than not, the criminals inflict serious injuries on the victim. Again, in case you suspect such an attack, lock the doors, keep the motor running, and ask the people to call a police officer. In the course of this presentation, we pointed out over 50 alerts which could prevent crimes against senior citizens as well as their juniors. Awareness of these dangers could have indeed prevented crimes. This gentleman wouldn't have had his wallet lifted. This woman wouldn't have been the victim of an attack by a phony repairman. This victim wouldn't have had his car stolen and this person wouldn't have been robbed when his car ran out of gas. Follow our suggestions so that we won't have to see you in this unfortunate lineup.